Welcome once again to Math for Game Developers. Today we have an empty page, and I'm very excited to fill it with some math. We're going to learn some new integration techniques, expanding on the integration techniques that we uh, learned about last time. And I'm just going to write here our, our previous technique that we learned about, which was semi-implicit Euler. Gonna add that n plus one right there. That's what makes it semi-implicit. And uh, okay, so let's see. Our goal here, we're gonna try and come up with a new technique, which instead of storing a position and a velocity, we'll store instead two positions. Uh, and I'll I'll try and draw what that means here. So here we store the position and the velocity of an object is what we store. Instead of that, we want to try storing the previous position and the current position. And this works because uh, you can calculate the velocity. The velocity is implicit as the, uh, as, uh, let's see, h times the vector between these two um, these two positions. So let's see what that looks like in a formula. We're going to take this formula right here. We're going to modify it by first reducing all of the the n's. So here we have x n equals x minus one plus h v n, and then. In one final step, I'm going to solve for Vn. Vn is xn minus x n minus 1, all times 1 over h. All right, so we can calculate the, uh, the velocity given two positions. So we're going to see if we can build an integration method out of this and, and, uh, and see what happens here. So starting back from the original equation, I'm going to replace this v minus one, substitute this mean v n plus one into this other v n plus one right here. And I'm gonna get a new equation. Uh, and now, let me just simplify it real quick. And now is the time for me to take this guy right here and substitute him for this Vn. So I'm just gonna take Vn equals Xn minus Xn minus one and substitute that right here x minus x n minus minus one times one over h plus this h squared a n. And the last step is to simplify. These h's cancel out. And we have two x n's here, so this will be two x n minus x n minus one plus h squared and so we did a lot of manipulations and now we have a formula uh, for the next position remember this is this is x n plus one or this guy x n plus one equals 2 x n minus x n minus one so we can calculate using the current position and previous position and whatever acceleration we might have, what should be the next position? By just extrapolating from these two previous positions. And numerically, you can see that in this case, not in all cases, but in this case, it's identical to semi-implicit Euler. So it's, it's really a very similar technique, except that there are some weird uh, differences that are going to happen. Um, so, Let's say that you have this wall right here and you have and you have your semi-implicit Euler. 
Okay, well, well, here we go. We have a position and a velocity. Here's our position and our velocity. Everything is good. We haven't hit the wall yet. We're going to, uh, well, this is HVN, really. We're going to update right here. We're going to be XN plus 1. And let's say our velocity hasn't changed, but this time, for our next iteration, our velocity is going to hit the wall. So with, uh, with semi-implicit Euler, this is a pretty straightforward case to solve. You, uh, depending on whether your collision is elastic or inelastic or whatever, you can do a few things, but then you just, uh, you know, you set the new, let's say you want it to reflect off the wall, you set the new position right here, and you set the new velocity right there, and you're done. Um, but with with Verlet, this is not so simple. With Verlet, you, do, you don't actually store this velocity. Instead, you're only storing positions. So let's see what happens with Verlet. Okay, you have, let's see, I'm going to change these numbers now. You have x minus 1 here xn minus 1 here and xn here. And then you calculate the new position using Verlet, you're going to get something in here and you're going to see that it's crossed the wall. Uh, and that's no good. So you have to update the, the, the position to account for the collision. But where do you put it? Well, the, the easiest way to do it is, let's see, you know the normal of this wall right here. Okay, so you move the uh, po the point along the normal until it's no longer inside the wall. So you move the new p calculated point. But then, since... So this is xn minus 1. Since the velocity is the implicit difference between our previous two positions, you, you can see that we used to have this velocity, and now that we now we have that velocity, our velocity has changed both in in magnitude and in direction. Uh, and that may not be what you desired. So it, it could be something, you, you could say, well, this is okay, like this is the simplest way to do it. This is fine, but it, it might not be, um, it may be something that we can improve on here. So let's try something else. So instead of, uh, Instead of moving it out with the normal, we're just going to calculate where it would have hit the wall. Okay, and we're going to move it there. So at least now the, the new velocity vector is a little bit shorter in, um, in magnitude, but it has not changed direction. So that may be a, um, a benefit for us. But it has still lost quite a bit of energy because the new velocity is much shorter than the old velocity. So the last, um, the last big thing that, that you can do is you can do the same reflection thing as you did before. You can put the new one right here. Should be even farther. Right? And you can pretend that the, that the particle hit and bounced off the wall and is here. But the new velocity, if we keep things the way they are, would be this guy. And what it should be is this guy. So you have to take the xn position and actually move it. You have to pretend that the particle used to be here. Right? So that in the next iteration it uses this vector instead of that vector. So these are all crazy um, edge cases that you have to worry about when you're doing Verlet integration, but you don't have to worry about when you're doing semi-implicit Euler. But the advantage for using Verlet is that this is really easy to implement on a GPU. You just kind of have one buffer of your previous position. These are your xn minus ones. And you have a buffer of your current positions, xn's. And then you have a buffer of your next positions, xn plus ones. And you just keep flying through these buffers and updating them and rotating around. So depending on uh, depending on what you want, Verlet and SI Euler are very similar, um, but their implementation details are a little bit different. So let's go to the code section and we'll see how all of this works in code. So here we are, we have to calculate the new position of our satellite. Let's look at what this satellite structure looks like. 
Uh, it has a position and a previous position. It does have a velocity, but that's because the other integration methods use velocity. So it's here. Um, and we're going to calculate it, but we're only going to use it for rendering. We're going to use it to show a little arrow in front of our, in front of our satellite. We're not going to use it for the actual integration. So let's do it. Um, we know that our next position should equal two times our current position minus our last position, then plus h times h times the acceleration function. And then there's one last thing that we have to do, um, which is to update the last position such that it is the position from this time around. And uh, notice, uh, take note that I had to save away the position from from this time because I've already overwritten it with a position from last time. So I have to save this right here before I um, assign it. Otherwise it will get overwritten in this statement right here. So good. Um, and then we calculate the velocity so that we can see how fast it is going and we're going to compile there. All right, and let's go. So here is Verlet in action. It's making an elliptical orbit of our star here. Um, and actually for comparison, let me also turn on, turn on semi-implicit Euler as well that we did last time so that we can see both of them side by side and we can kind of compare. And in this case, they are so close that they overlay each other completely and you can't, you can only see, you can kind of see yellow peeking through there. We have some Z fighting going on. Uh, but they're so close to each other, in fact, that they're almost exactly the same thing. So each one has implementation trade-offs that you want to consider, but you'll get, for the most part, the same, uh, the same performance out of both of them. So... That, let's see, that does it for our projectile method functions. Next time we're going to look into, we're going to go back to velocity fields that we started out with and look to see some good methods for doing those. See you next time.